World Championship qualifiers is now at an end. Fiend Smith Snake Eye, apparently, is best deck. So we're going to talk about that today, but we're also going to talk about a very unique hand trap, Spooky Dogwood. This was a very interesting hand trap played by George S. Um, pretty much in this tournament. I think that it's one of the best cards that you could play that no one really thought of. But this guy, George, has definitely got a good W off of this. So we're going to talk about it today. Also, we're going to talk about the Fiend Smith engine today. It's going to be a great video for you. So let's hop into it. What's going on, my boys? I'm YT Dan, Legendary Duelist, back at it again with some more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And today we're talking about that World Championship Qualifiers 2024 that just happened over this last weekend. Now, if you've been sleeping under a Nibiru, you probably have not heard about the Fiend Smith engine. So we're going to definitely talk about that right now. So what's really cool about the Fiend Smith engine is that it goes into exactly what I've been talking about in my book. It goes into what I've been talking about in my videos. I've been talking about what's going on in my live streams. I need every duelist, every person who's watching this video who complains about one card combos to stop. I need everybody who talks about one card combos in an annoying way who hates one card combos to stop because the primary mode of utilizing cards in Yu-Gi-Oh, competitive or otherwise, world champion status or otherwise, is that we get two cards together to combo off. But in order to enable the two cards together on the field to combo off, we need a one card combo to enable it which is why we use hand traps. And of course, the types of hand traps that we use, what kind of hand traps do we need to use? We need to use hand traps that are gonna end the opponent's turn or progress my own. Simple as that. If the hand trap ends the opponent's turn, it's done a good job. One card stopped, potentially 10, amazing. Or if it's gonna progress my own, you tried to use droll on me, I had called by the grave, get out of here. You know, I had, uh, what's that other card? Uh, designator. You know, get it out of here. You know, so either I'm going to use my hand traps to progress my play or I'm going to use it to slow my opponent down. But the reason why I talk so much about this one card combo uh, idea and why it's not going anywhere, just look at this card, Fiend Smith Requiem. You need at least one link monster to get into this guy. You know, link one card. And this link one card says sacrifice itself to bring out a fiend smith card and the fiend smith card is you're going to bring out a fiend smith engraver and pretty much it can also search another light fiend too so this so this thing is pretty disgusting to be very fair and also you got fiend smith track that also is a fusion uh card so all these cards work together in a fantastic synergy with pretty much everything you can run into anything because the requirements are very generic and this is the quote unquote the new one card combo now people don't like this because obviously everyone likes to go first and everyone likes to run go first you know counter hand traps and yeah in our current metagame we don't have a maxi but there is a maxi equivalent ghost the spooky dogwood ghost sister spooky dogwood is used so ill frequently that you know honestly a lot of people just don't know what it does so what does ghost girl spooky dogwood do basically it's a maxi but for life points and what we're going to see in this duel with pack is that um george is going to use it very effectively as you can see it's laid down here in the graveyard and he's already activated it he activated on the special summit of snake eye ash now I typically don't watch these. These are really boring, you know, especially for me who kind of understands where these games are going. And, you know, once someone builds up a sufficient amount of tempo and momentum, it's very hard to kind of unseat that. So I kind of don't watch these a lot, but I happen to be watching this one because my boy Pat was in there. You know, it's Pat, you know, everybody likes Pat. Everybody watch Pat. Well, at least I watch him. And, you know, you're checking out Pat and you're watching what's going on. And I see he's playing Fiend Smith Snake Eye which is cool. And I'm interested in George because he's saying Sphinx Fist, you bail and you bail is pretty much new in master duel. So I was actually working on something else, but then I like locked in to watch this duel. And then after he activated spooky dogwood, pretty much he activated max C against Pat. And now 
think about this dynamic. As we're going to watch this video, it's going to unfold that um, Pac isn't, isn't going to com just completely play into it. He's going to play into it just a little bit. And as he plays into it just a little bit, you know, you're gaining um, life points based on the attack power of each monster. So basically, uh, right there, that's 1,800 points on the board. And then he's going to keep adding more and more. And before you know it, I think his life points gets all the way up to 13,000. Now, what's cool about that is why, why does Spooky Dog would even matter? Number one, 13,000 is a lot of life points. And according to, for example, Konami themselves, based off their advertisement, one of the only decks that can hit 13,000 life points, you know, easily is the Tenpai Dragon deck. But Pac is not on Tenpai Dragon. Pac is on Snake Eye. So Pac might not be able to put out enough damage to take George out in one turn. Cause you got to think about it like this. For every monster pack summons, George gains the life points. So unless the monster swinging two times or the monster summoned at 3000 boosts his attack to 6,000, unless that happens, it's going to be really hard for pack to unseat him. And also access code talker isn't going to help either because to get him on the board, you got to put you know, a lot of monsters on the board, or at least two monsters on the board, which can get you close to five Gs. So at the end, access code talker is only gonna be hitting for a thousand. So spooky dogwood right now is actually putting in work. It, now see, this is what I'm talking about right here. Why do we play hand traps, folks? We play hand traps to end our opponent's turn or to progress our own. Now look, George just played a hand trap and it pretty much ended Pac's turn. The commentators even say later on in this, you know, um, like, again, like I said, when I watch this, it's pretty obvious what's going on. So I, I'm not very interested in watching this. I'd rather do something else or play my own Master Duel games. But the commentators even say, like, well, damn. It's, I mean, I'm not saying that Pac's back row is dead, but uh, he's only got two back row back there. Like, they literally say that in this commentary. So they know that pretty much this duel is over because not only does uh, George have the life point advantage due to the spooky dark dank wood, he's also got the time advantage. So, and he's got you bail. So it's like, how can Pac effectively get over there? He really can't, not in 11 minutes, folks, not in 11 minutes. So unfortunately right here, Pack is kind of cooked. And then on top of that, he hits him with forbidden droplets. So this is what I'm talking about, about like going second, for example. You know, Spooky Dogwood was a, a powerful enough hand trap to stop Pack's play. Then he follows it up with droplet. Even if he doesn't beat him in this duel, he gets the dub on time because his life points is way too high and Pack can't get past these two bells. Now he's into the Fiendsmith engine and he's beginning to cook. And you guys got to really understand that, you know, it's a duel of one card combos. George stopped Pac's one card combo. You know, he, he stopped it. There's nothing he can do about moving forward in this combo. Now, George does say at the end of this, he gives a lot of respect to Pac. You know, he said that him coming into this tournament, you know, he, he actually feared Pac. He thought like shit. He was like... I like if I he's like of all the things I got to do all the the decks I got to play he said he doesn't fear a deck he said he fears the duelist so George really knows like what's going on from a, a Yu-Gi-Oh gameplay mental perspective he knows that it's not the deck it's not the archetype it's not the one card combo it's the actual duelist and what's going on in his hands now while Pack is in this rough position he's actually not giving up like notice like when I talked about in my previous videos about willpower and understanding like the mind of a duelist pack is locked in like pack is not defeated pack is not demoralized pack might realize the situation that he's in he might understand that it's a tough spot but he's still not willing to give up you, as you can see he's still actively playing his um snake eye engine and he's beginning to even defend himself so again pack hasn't given up on this duel but in the end like i did kind of already spoil george does get the dub and you know pack does it eventually call it as time gets closer but pack does continue to fight he doesn't give up and he also even though the um commentators 
kind of discounted his back row. Pac isn't revealing that his back row is, you know, dead or, or his back row is not, like inconsequential. Pac's still in the game. It looks like he's focused. It looks like he's locked in. And George is locked in too. Pretty much. I mean, you can look at these both these duelists. George is con concerned with winning the duel and not dropping the game because he's built up this huge amount of tempo. His tempo is really high right now because of that spooky dog would play, his life points, and effectively stopping Pac in his tracks with one hand trap. So essentially, he utilized Maxi. Because if he used Spooky Dogwood and Pac just stopped playing, then Spooky Dogwood did his point, did his job. But if he continued to just play, 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 and build his whole field up, George had the droplets. So either way it goes, like when you think about it, it's about understanding these duelists up here. And George really knew what was going on. And and to be real, George has an advantage over Pac because Pac is a public duelist. Like like George can watch like 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 Mike Tyson used to watch um his opponents uh box or whatever. And and a lot of boxers or fighters watch their opponents to learn the little idiosyncrasies of their moves and combinations so that they can understand how to get into the mind of the opponent. Like um Mike Tyson used to say he used to go to back to the locker room and he would go to people and say, "Hey, champ, you know you feeling a little, you feeling okay? You know you feeling all right? You know, you know I'm getting ready for the fight. You know, and you know you're looking, you know you're looking a little tired. You know, and he'll he'll say that to you before he goes to beat you up in the ring, basically to weaken you up here, to demoralize you in the mind. But George had a ton of respect coming into this duel, but he also was aware how powerful Pac was, so he kind of went into his game mode and that spooky dogwood play was an amazing play that i don't think um a lot of people made and i didn't see in a lot of deck lists you know i saw uh, like a spooky dogwood here or there but honestly spooky dogwood was just pretty good now i didn't watch this entire tournament obviously um but like i mentioned before i did tune in just to catch this and i, I and i saw the power of the fiend smith engine I saw how amazing Spooky Dogwood worked, and it actually encouraged me to try Spooky Dogwood myself. But I haven't gotten it into anything uh, in Master Duel. But I'm I'm kind of feeling like I want to try that card out because obviously Spooky Dogwood, like if you played it against George right now, if he has Spooky Dogwood right now, you know, George definitely would change his plays. But honestly, if you think about it, with um, High King Caesar on the field. He's got Super Poly U Bell on the field. You know, he he's still cooking with the Fiendsmith engine. I think he's in the Link 2 or Link 3 on the Fiendsmith engine. Um, and he's still just going through cards, cycling through cards. So, you know, as you can see, this, he, he's really cooking off of the power of, uh, oh, and he's seeking. Okay. Uh, that's all he really had. Okay. It was seeking back there. Uh, sinful spoils. Okay. Um, and, um, because Seeking was back there, you know, I guess he just went ahead and uh, chained it. Um, it's actually kind of funny, almost like Master Duel. It was like, you know, hey, <laughs> are you going to activate this or not? <laughs> just keep keep chaining yellow. But uh, basically, um, right now, we're at the point where it's, it's in game. So, you know, as you can see, that spooky dog will put in a lot of work. And I think that we should just keep, just, just keep looking at this. Like, he got to look over, check out the time, you know. Pac's like, yeah, I ain't cutting that shit. <laughs> I know that feeling. When you just be like, fuck it, man. Yeah, fuck it, man. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> so attack over IP. IP's out of here. And then we're going to get rid of Snake Eye Ash. We're going to get rid of uh, um, uh, Poppy. More cards, rather, because you can't use, you know, this Phantom of U-Bell as a material. He tried to Nibiru there, Apocalypse, but it looks like it is changing that effect with the Phantom of U-Bell to destroy U-Bell in the deck instead. So even with some of the strongest cards here, George's very well built out board is just able to stop whatever it needs and is now destroying that U-Bell Terra Incarnate likely to get off the effect of that field spell. Yeah, honestly, George is really cooking right now. Pat tried to hit him with the Nibiru, and then he has you Bell Spirit Incarnate. Plus, he's got the Wave King Caesar. So either way, he's gonna negate the summon, or he's gonna or he's gonna summon more you Bell stuff. Like he's he's in complete control. He's in complete control. And honestly, Pat couldn't really do anything with um, Nibiru anyway on this next turn. So he kind of had to play it. But that's the whole thing about Nibiru. 
That's why I don't like Nibiru, honestly. I feel like Nibiru's always want the one card short card for me. Um, so I can't really, you know. Ooh, Ghost Ogre. Yikes. Yeah. That Ghost Ogre was nice. But uh, but yeah. Yeah, so turn. Yeah, so right now we are sitting here. This is the final turn. As you can see, the time is running down. And Pax is pretty much looking for, um, you know, he's looking for an out. <laughs> but this is a devastating board. Like, you know, I mean, honestly, um, I think George doesn't have any cards in his hand. So, like, if Pac had some go second stuff, he would be able to contend with that. But I don't think Pac has go second stuff in this uh, version at this time. I'm not I'm not 100% sure what he sided in or out, but I don't think he has go second stuff per se. I know he's got the nib, but... I mean, he's looking for something to see if he can do something, but I don't think he can. I think this is actually where he does decide to actually scoop it up. Yeah, yeah, he had a uh, cross out Desi in there. I saw that as he thumbed through the deck real quick. Uh, yeah, see how he's playing quicker for time. Basically because, you know, obviously, <laughs> you know, if he's going to do something, he's got to do it now. But and then he fuses. Oh, oh, he changed the effect into destroying the U-Bell monster. So, yeah, again, more control. Like, changing opponent's effects is disgusting. Like, changing opponent's effects to pop other stuff is insane, the U-Bell. Yeah, because, oh, yeah, I forgot. It's not just a super poly. It also can change effects. It's crazy. <laughs> and he goes, Oak, Poplar. What did he do? Okay, Flame Burst Dragon. Flame Burst Dragon, what he's going to do, put you bell down. Yeah, put Fusion, you bell down. And he does not change. And Requiem. And, ooh, now look. My pack's coming back. He's got Requiem. And he's got a couple plays. But, again, 51 seconds on time. Like, again, 51 seconds on time, 3,600 life points, Spooky Dankwood, put george up like <laughs> monster rebone he's trying to rebone the monster oh look he's trying to rebone the fiend smith engine yeah but even though he's reboning the fiend smith engine it's just still not enough well pop you bell field effect you bell dank incarnate or you bell whatever the fire the second form is now he's got Requiem on the board. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Set. Eight, seven, six, five. Scoop. <laughs> that was a good match, though. I'm not going to lie. Pac was doing good, but I really see, see that Spooky Dogwood as the game changer because it just forced him to stop. <laughs> it just forced him to stop. And because it forced him to stop, you know, Spooky Dogwood was just way too effective, my boy. So, again, this was a definitely an amazing tournament. I think the whole idea that Fiend Smith Snake Eye is now the top deck, it just plays more into the one-card combo and why we need to learn and understand how to combat this one-card combo meta more effectively. And honestly, cards like Spooky Dogwood may be an answer.